This fashion is hot, hot. Hey guys, it's Jess from She's Posh. Welcome back. And today I'm going to share with you five fashion trends throughout the centuries that were very, very flammable. I make videos anytime I want, so please remember to hit subscribe below and ring my bell so we can become best friends here on the internet. Okay guys, I have another fun video for you where I just look at some of the history of fashion and I picked five that if you rocked these fashion trends, you had a chance to go up in flames for real Z. The fashion was hot, but it could get very, very hot, literally. So let's have some fun looking back at the history of fashion and how you and I probably would have went down in flames. The first one I thought of was crinoline dresses right here, the gone with the wind moment. Now these dresses, fun fact, they were actually created because women were starting to walk by themselves alone on the streets, I know, risque, right? And because they were so poofy, it was said to keep the men's like hands off of them. So it was almost like the six foot rule type thing. So that's why it was usually worn by young women. However, there were accounts that the wind would get underneath these dresses and some girls you know, had injuries because they were blown off of streets, off of cliffs, running into things. So that's probably what would happen to me because I'm freaking clumsy. But the biggest death that would happen with women is because they were so big and fireplaces were how you heated your home, that these would easily catch on fire. And because they were such a difficult contraption to get in, they had boning and all this stuff, that most of these ladies would go up in flames. You could be burned alive very easily, if not very severely burned because it was really hard to take this off you when you were engulfed in flames. So yes, this gone with the wind moment could have made you go up with the wind. Another way women shared their hot fashion and got hot is wigs, guys. Wigs were everywhere. Elizabethan times, people were just rocking wigs up until the 1700s. And the fun fact is like why people were rocking wigs is a lot of the makeup that we were using was made with lead. So it actually caused hair loss, which is kind of funny. So maybe if they weren't wearing, trying to get the pale skin, putting the makeup on, that they would still have their hair and not have to sport a wig. But the wigs were actually made of human hair, especially if you were wealthy. They really preferred the the hair of a virgin, the best, yes they did. Since it was human hair and they wanted it big and bold and beautiful, that these had the tendency to catch on fire. And because they were so big and poofy, you wouldn't notice if you were walking past a candle because a lot of the homes were, you know, they had candles on the sides, by the windows, chandeliers, all this stuff. And you have this huge hair piece that you would go up in flames. And since it's real hair, it just burns really, really fast. So yes, lots of injuries and she definitely lights up the room. Number three, including the wigs, this fashion called the fontonage was a fancy headpiece that also had a similar problem to the wig. And it's kind of a fun fact how this hairpiece came to be. It was named after the Duchess de Fontenage. She was actually a mistress to, I believe it was Henry the 14th. And she actually fell off a horse while she was hunting and her hair got like all messed up. So what she did, was she took off garter belts and she pulled her hair up with it on top of her head and it was a look. It was like, oh, this is beautiful. This happy fashion accident became a fashion trend and ladies everywhere wanted beautiful ribbon and lace headpieces on their hair and they just kept getting higher and higher and more dramatic and more dramatic. I mean, some of the women reported neck problems trying to hold up some of these fancy pieces. But of course, just like the wig, these high fancy pieces were up near the chandeliers that were lit with candles. So then she became a human candle and it took a while before her to notice that she was on fire, then her hair is on fire, and then her face is on fire. And yes, most of the women were very severely burned. There are accounts of some ladies ended up succumbing to their burns after the fact. But yes, this hot fashion got too hot too hot for me, but I totally would be rocking a fun headpiece though. I could so see myself like getting all dressed up, getting all glamorous, putting all these ribbons on, get myself a tiara, like huge 
Tierra moments and then going up in flames. But what a way to go, right? Number four, we have the plastic cups. So in the late 1800s, roughly, the, the style was having a cuff at the end of your jacket, wearing a complete shirt underneath to get that cuff look. Just another thing to clean. It's so much harder to wear a shirt underneath every single day. But when plastic cuffs were invented, People were so excited because first of all, plastic was super easy to clean and it was just one cuff. So you didn't have to wear a shirt under your outfit. They also made collars and things like that that you could wear around your neck. Just everybody was able to have some hot, hot fashion, but it came at a price. The first plastics that were invented were actually pretty flammable. <laughs> Everything was flammable. Well, very common was for men and women both use this, but men lighting their pipes, lighting their cigarettes, their cigars. They could also light their hand on fire. But a crazy fun fact is that these had been known, their reports, their reports, that these cuffs would spontaneously combust. Like they would just catch on fire themselves. I don't know if it was the sun, if they got too hot, if it what some kind of chemical reaction would happen and these would just self ignite. Can you just imagine like trying to look cool and fierce? I'd be like, look at me and my fancy cuffs. Like I would be strutting to the general store and my fun plastic cuffs feeling myself and then all of a sudden I'd be like, is it hot in here or is it just me? It is me, it is me guys. Could you even imagine this happening to your neighbor, a friend, or yourself? And the last one on this list, we are gonna talk about the 1930s and we're gonna talk about synthetic fabrics. Synthetic fabrics started to be introduced and one was the first synthetic silk and silk was something that was super expensive back in the day. So the introduction of synthetic silk meant that all women, regardless of your class, could look classy. It was made with nitric acid, which is super, super combustible. There's actually reports in these factories that this was made of explosions. So it doesn't really give the woman that much success with this type of fabric. So yes, yeah, she looked beautiful and graceful, but if she walked past a candle, if a spark from a cigarette was flung at her, she could go up in flames due to this fabric. She looked hot, but this girl is on fire has like a whole new meaning if you think about it. So I would definitely like some of these fashions, like your girl would be that person. I would risk it for a fashion moment. Luckily, I wouldn't be a smoker. I would probably try to stay away from some candles. But they're actually, this happened so often that there was a newspaper article that posted that if you wanted to be rid of your mother-in-law, this is awful, but if you wanted to be rid of your mother-in-law, buy her a new dress made of this synthetic silk and light a candle and you'd be rid of her. The newspaper was just making this casual. People are catching on fire, factories are blowing up and they're like, hey, you got, you got a problem? Here, I'll give you a solution in the newspaper. That is nuts. Like, I know they're joking, but seriously, guys. Okay, guys, that is everything. I'm hoping you're loving this new content that I have for you and you'll consider subscribing. But as always, I wanna thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again. Bye, guys.